Well, that song was called uh, Come Back to Sorrento. And our theme for cooking with Ray today is uh, uh, Italian. Uh, it's, it's not Sorrento, it's Sicily, and we're going to do Arancini Siciliana. Now I'm a professional musician, saxophone player, singer and band leader, but I'm also a, a, a cook, I'm not a professional cook, but I enjoy cooking for myself, my family, my friends. And today we're going to make for you arancini. Now arancini are beautiful fried rice balls, they're absolutely amazing, and they're, uh, uh, I think, predominantly Sicilian, but uh, you can get them in the south of Italy, in Naples and Calabria, places like that. And um, what they are, they're just deep fried rice balls, coated with breadcrumbs and egg, and you can fill them with some, uh, some ragu or bolognese sauce, uh, a few frozen peas and some mozzarella or provolone, and they're, um, they're really beautiful. And what's more, kids like them, they're great party food. So today, on Cooking with Ray, we'll show you how to make arancini. Well, for the arancini, first of all, because they are fried rice balls, you'll need the rice. So what we use is aboro rice, not basmati or long grain, it won't work. So use the aboro, and inside we put some mozzarella cheese, or you can use, really if you want, you can use some provolone, which is very tangy, or even some gorgonzola, it will still be lovely, but today we're going to use mozzarella. A uh, little bit of saffron for our star, call me bowl of rice, just to give the rice a nice yellow colour. Uh, some salt and pepper, plenty of salt and pepper an egg for coating the arancini, uh, and then we dip it in the breadcrumbs afterwards, so we've got some breadcrumbs, a little bit of flat, flat leaf parsley, just finely chopped up, some parmigiano cheese, parmesan cheese for grating, and um, just put some frozen peas in as well, and uh, that's about it. Ar Arancini's really, um, there's so many variations, there's one in, in the south of Italy, in, in, in Rome and Calabria, they call it a suppli, which is slightly different, it's a, it's a similar principle, but it's got some different things in it. The arancinis I like in Sicily have a, a bolognese or ragu sauce in the middle, a little bit of ragu in the middle. So when you've got your leftover bolognese, uh, keep, just, just keep some aside for your arancini. So these ones we're going to put some bolognese sauce in the middle anyway. So what we do is, we've got our, we've got our water, we've got some stock in with the water as well and some salt. And what we'll do is, we'll put the rice in the boiling water. We'll give it a stir and then we'll leave it till it's done, probably about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then we'll drain the excess water off. Okay, so we add our rice to the, 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 the water in the stock. There you go. And that'll come, bring that back up to the boil again. And give it a little stir. And what we're going to do now, we're just going to add a little bit of saffron to the, uh, the, the water in the stock and the rice, just to give the rice a nice yellow colour. So we've got our saffron here. Give it a bit of a stir, right over there, and that's going to be lovely. And this quick method, believe me, once you put all the other ingredients in, your parmigiano, your salt and pepper, your parsley, a few frozen peas, uh, it's going to be fine. Um, I, I wouldn't waste time going through the whole risotto rigmarole for this, because it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. What, what, once our rice is brought up to the boil, then we'll just turn the heat down to about a medium and just let it bubble there. Like I say, every 10 minutes or so, just check it, check the rice. You don't want to overcook the rice so it's horrible, but again, slightly more than al dente, I would say, just so it sticks together. We've had about 12 minutes now, and basically our rice is done. So, we can take our rice off the stove, and drain it. Yeah, we'll drain all the excess water off it. Okay. Right, it's a nice yellow rice. We're going to put it on here. And then we're going to mix in our ingredients for our arancini. What we're going to do first, a little bit of binding. Oh, excuse me. A little bit of binding, we're going to put an egg. There you go. Our flat leaf parsley. Most of our flat leaf parsley. Our frozen peas. We're going. And then we need a nice lot of salt and pepper. And then we're going to put our parmigiana in there. We're going to grate some nice parm plenty of parmigiana. Or parmesan. We're going to have a mixture nice. And plenty of pepper on it. And salt.
Okay, so what we're going to do now, we've put our peas in, our beaten egg, all our uh, lovely salt and pepper and our flat leaf parsley. We're going to put some plenty of parm, uh, great, plenty of parmesan in this mixture as well. Literally plenty, just to give it a lovely Italian flavour. So we're putting our fresh parmesan in here, our fresh parmesan. Uh, when I was a kid, you know, in the 70s, we, I never remember getting this. We used to have that horrible stuff in the, the dried stuff in the, in the uh, cardboard sort of pots. It's, it's not terrible, it's like all, all, awful, but uh, thank God we got this, you know, ingredients have improved. You can buy the fresh parmesan. I'm going to put loads of it in here. This parmesan, this little bit of parmesan right here, started off like that. So I put a good, probably two, two inches of parmesan in, in, in our mixture. I mean, it's, it's up to you, but I, I like to put quite a lot, just to make sure it's got that lovely, uh, lovely cheesy flavour. Then all we do, very simply, we just mix a lot together, make sure it's well mixed, and then we're going to put it in the fridge and uh, let it go in the fridge, let it get cold for at least two hours, because otherwise you won't be able to bind that together, it will all fall apart. If you try to do that now, once it's mixed, It'll all fall apart, it's all hot and sticky. You need to get it nice and cold, nice and chilled. Like I said earlier with these arancini, you, just, you can improvise really. You don't have to do exactly what I've done. This is just basically the basic recipe. You could chop up a little bit of prosciutto or ham, a little bit of ham, a little bit of parma ham in there very, very finely and put it in, that will work nice. Maybe even a little bit of nutmeg in there. I've done that before and it, it adds a, quite a nice little flavour. A little bit of nutmeg in there, that would be, be nice. Well, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna, uh, we've got all our lovely mixture here. It smells great with all the cheese and the nice uh, uh, peas and all the other stuff. We're gonna put that in the fridge now, at least, I would say at least two hours, just to make sure it's nice and stiff so you can roll it into the balls. So here it is. Into our fridge. Right, we put our rice in the fridge for a couple of hours now, and as you can see, look, I'll show you. That's well ready now to put in our arancini balls. Look, now if you did that when it was straight out of the, the pan, it would just fall apart. So you just need it nice and sticky like that. That's what we're going to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a big. Oh no, we're not. We're going to whisk our egg first, don't we? <laughs> so we'll just whisk our egg up. There we go. Just beat our egg. Okay. Then what we do is, remember, we get half our mixture, really. And then we make a little indentation in it like this. And it's soft enough to do it. And then we get our ragu, or our bolognese sauce. Nice, slow-cooked ragu. Keep your meat sauces on for a long time. Two or three hours. Just simmer it and keep checking it doesn't stick, because it makes such a difference. There's nothing worse than dog meat ragu, I call it, dog meat bolognese. It's just literally on for half an hour and shoved on the plate. It's horrible, it really is. Now you get our mozzarella, we'll put our mozzarella, we'll put a little bit more mozzarella in there, just to give that nice oozy cheese. This all melts when it fries, and it's lovely. So we'll fold that round, then get another little bit of a mixture of the arancini out, you see? But just fold it in, you see? You can plug up any of your holes. With the uh, extra ragu, and like I said, if you free, if you chill this mixture for a good couple of hours, or in the freezer maybe even for an hour if you can, then you won't have any problem with this falling apart. Because if you do it straight after it's uh, the rice is cooked and it's warm, you won't have a chance of keeping these together. Just there it is, lovely arancini. And you know I said before, it's called arancini because it's orange shape. That's it, arancia, orange. Look. And then we'll put it in our breadcrumbs, slice it in our breadcrumbs like that. And there it is. You've got a lot of different things, different ones. You could put some gorgonzola in this if you want, that might be good, that nice. I've tried that once, it was lovely. Or you can put, when you do your rice, you can put your whole lot of bolognese sauce in with your rice and mix it up. Again, you've got a well make it well chilled, and that's called a suppli, which is more of a Roman one, but that's, uh, that's lovely. And we're going to be ready to uh, deep fry these in a minute. I think we've got room for about one more. Okay, our cheese done. We've made these ones quite large, because they're pretty good. So I reckon that you should leave these for about six minutes, seven minutes. Check them out. The little trick is, 
If you're not sure, you can always do it with your fart, then put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds or about a minute. And you know what? That will get the mozzarella going. Because it's lovely over the cheese. And that mozzarella should be well melted inside that. Okay. There it is. Wow, look at that. That's all melted. Our ragu's all lovely and hot. It's oozing beautiful. Our ragu cheese. Mmm. Lovely and crunchy, soft in the middle. Perfetto. I'm a pizza.